The Horn Frogs are taking their game night walk to Eamon Carter Stadium. And TCU fans are ready for a Texas size showdown with the Longhorns. Quarterback Case McCoy leads Texas and has produced three straight wins. TCU welcomes back Casey Paul Hall, but will share time behind center with Trevon Boykin. Saddle up, it's college football, Texas style. Welcome to Fox College Football, Fort Worth, Texas, and from the Big 12, it's time for Texas and TCU. Oh, and here come the Horn Frogs. Frank Bowerjack. Joey Harrington, Ryan Neese will join us in just a few moments. Welcome to Fox Sports 1 Prime Time. Joey, let me take you back to mid-September. Texas was upside down. Here it is four weeks later. Mac Brown and the Longhorns. Well, let's call them right side up. Well, let's call them more than right side up. Let's call them what they are. A real quiet favorite right now in the Big 12. Defensively, defensively, they've got it going ever since Greg Robinson came back. They're playing fast and they're playing free. Case McGoy has taken over for an injured David Ash, and all he's doing is getting the ball into the hands of his playmakers, and they are all over the field. On the other side of the field, TCU gets Casey Paul Hall back under center. He'll play some, not the whole game, but they're just hoping he can provide some sort of consistency for this offense to go along with a defense that we've come to expect for Gary, from Gary Patterson. Just tremendous. Everything is bigger in Texas, and tonight we've got a Texas-style rivalry. The Longhorns hope to maintain momentum after a big win over Oklahoma, while TCU hopes to regain their swagger. Longhorns and Horn Frogs next on Fox Sports 1. Welcome to Fox College Football, presented by Geico. We're in Fort Worth, Texas, home of TCU. And tonight, the Longhorns are in town, and Ryan East is with head coach Mac Brown. Coach Brown, you guys are coming off of the bye week, followed by a huge victory from Oklahoma. How do you take the momentum from that game into this game? What an environment, huh? <laughs> Get him here, Ryan. What you do is beating Oklahoma and being 3-0 in the league makes this game much more important now. So we've got to take another step tonight toward the Big 12 championship. Coach, defensively, you guys are much improved. What's been the key to success on that side of the ball? Simpler. We're playing with more confidence, stopping the run better, and tackling better in space. Best of luck tonight, Coach. Back up to you, Craig. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Coach. Gary Patterson is the head coach at TCU. So far, it's been a win one, lose one kind of season and looking to make a statement tonight against the visiting Longhorns of Texas. TCU won the toss. They chose to defer. They'll have the ball to start the second half. Texas winners at three in a row. TCU trying to get back on track. Out of the end zone. And Joey, let's check out tonight's impact players. Well, they're going to be all over the place for Texas, but two of them you need to pay attention to. Jonathan Gray, out of, the, out of the backfield, a sophomore, just a tremendous talent, and Jackson Shipley. Case McCoy is going to look for Jackson, Jackson Shipley every time he needs a completion. On the other side of the ball for TCU, Jason Verrett, an All-American corner, is going to try and lock down one side of the field, and senior Elijah Olabode is going to come up from the free safety position and make a lot of tackles tonight. So Case McCoy trying to run Texas winning streak to four in a row after knocking off Oklahoma. It'll be difficult tonight to run up against the front and that second level of TCU. There is Case McCoy, makes his 10th start, a senior, 61% completion rating. And Case McCoy takes over for an injured David Ash. Now he may be back, Joey, he may not. He's still suffering concussion symptoms, and right now this team belongs to McCoy on second down. Jonathan Gray tries to pat it into the heart of TCU, maybe a yard. The Case McCoy has done a tremendous job 
of not only taking over for David Ash, but running this Texas offense. Like we mentioned in the open, there are playmakers everywhere. Jonathan Gray, you'll see Malcolm Brown in the backfield. You're going to see Jackson Shipley and Mike Davis. Case McCoy has to continue to get the ball to them efficiently. Texas fourth in the Big 12 and fourth or third down conversions were a minute in. McCoy on a slingshot, and he bounces it short and complete. Coming with pressure from the left side, John Coots, number 97. Well, get used to seeing TCU in the backfield. They, you know, the, for as many struggles as they had offensively, they have, they've just maintained that stellar defense that they've always seemed to have. They lead the Big 12 right now in sacks with 24. They are aggressive, they're all over the place, and you're going to keep seeing that tonight. Anthony Farah will punt for Texas inside his own 15-yard line. Cameron Eccles Looper at his phone 32, and we've got multiple flags down. Ball starts on the offense. Number 15, five-yard penalty. A referee tonight, Scott Novak. There's Mac Brown, 16th season. Won the national title back in 05. There's been pressure on Mac Brown. This year, he's felt the pressure before. Made that coaching change defensively with a new coordinator, Greg Robinson. And three wins in front. The first four games with Robinson at the helm. High hanging punt and the third catch taken. There is contact and a flag is out at the 35. That was Eccles. Bryson Eccles, number 15 on special teams, who came in and made contact. Well, you can't touch him. I mean, that's especially when you make that fair there. catch call. Kicking team number 15. 15 yard penalty. First down. 43-yard punt. And on this side of the ball, Joey, let's check out impact players. Well, for TCU, B.J. Catalan is the guy out of the backfield who is their, their playmaker. But you'd get back Casey Paulhall. You don't see him at the start of the game right now. But he is the guy who they're hoping to bring some sort of consistency back to this TCU offense. And on de defense, Jackson Jeff at the defensive end position, and Quandre Diggs both have NFL lineage and are both great players on the way. Boykin gets the start. He's been inconsistent at times, and he throws the first ball to Ladarius Brown. His 17th reception moved the chains first down, TCU. And making the tackle was the middle backer, Dalton Santos. Well, right there is, is, is something TCU and Trevon Boykin see they haven't done in the last three weeks. Against Oklahoma a couple weeks ago, they didn't even have a first down in the first half. This is great if you're a TCU fan. Boykin, good protection throws, far side. This time on the hands of Brandon Carter. Carter's kind of been left out of the mix, Joey, of late. Picks up his 15th reception. The junior from Ulysses, Ulysses Texas. TCU marching downfield with the football. Aaron Green expected to get more touches tonight. At the 31-yard line, a couple of flags out. Knocked down by Malcolm Brown, number 90. Well, you're going to get a hold there on Jackson Jeffcoat. 10-yard penalty. Second down. We talked about it just a moment ago with TCU's first first down on their first play of the game. They have struggled in the first half the last three games, only having three points, 28 passing yards, and three first downs in three games, Craig, in the first half. Already two here in the opening quarter. Clock's under 13 minutes. Aaron Green in that backfield with Trevon Boykin. Three wide receivers, top of your screen. Tough pass, caught up high with the grab is Lanina. He's also gotten into the mix quite a bit. Ty Slanina, a freshman, true freshman, out of East Bernard, Texas, grabs his 15th reception of the season. Well, I tell you what, Trevon Boykin looks like a different quarterback right now than he has over the last three games. You know, we've we've mentioned it already, his struggles in the first half. No touchdowns, five interceptions, only completing 50% of his passes. Right now, he looks comfortable, he looks in control, and he's just delivering the football to open receivers. Third down, eight. Working on a play action. Wants a home run. Ball's got a man deep. A bump. Flag at the two-yard line. Contact. Deontay Gray and Duke Thomas tangled up down near the goal line. Deontay Gray has become 
the playmaker that TCU is looking for, especially on the outside. They had him isolated on the on the DB there. Joey, I'm not sure which way this may go. Uh, I, There's a push. That's why I'm hesitating here. I'm not so sure that Deontay Gray didn't push off with that left hand there. There are two fouls against the offense on the play. Holding offense number 56. Penalties decline. Pass interference on the offense number 20. That penalties decline. Fourth out. They've had issues with the offensive line. In fact, they made a switch at center. Eric Tausch took over. Joey Huntsman having trouble snapping the ball back to Boykin. Joey, and now the hold on Dunbar. And you're right. There was interference caused by Gray. Well, so often you see that ball when the receiver stops. The DB just runs into the receiver, and it's a natural pass interference call. There, Gray just pushed off a little bit when he probably didn't need to. This will be a 54-yard attempt. Jaden Overcombe, his longest of the season for 46. He's got the foot. Got it. No. Put the leg into it. It drifted just a bit. And from 54, over Chrome off the mark. LTCU moved the football in their first series. Obakrom tried a 54-yarder. He had leg enough. It looked to be good for a moment, and then it faded off to the right. And oh, did Mac Brown breathe a sigh of relief? But now McCoy goes back to work. Again, it's down to Brown, Jonathan Dre. Nothing fancy, Joey. This is just straight-ahead football, thinking they can maybe take on and beat that front of TCU. Well, oh, I think you've seen that Texas's focus from the very start is going to be establishing this run, and Jonathan Gray has has really emerged as the feature back with Malcolm, you know, separating himself from Malcolm Brown and Joe Bergeron. Last five games, Gray, 113 yards a game on the ground, over five yards a carry. That's right at his season average of five and change. He's lined up deep. We're going to swing it around. Here comes Johnson. Picks up a block. He's inside TC territory at the 49-yard line. Darjay Johnson, sophomore, Pflugerville, Texas, and he runs for a gain of 12. Joey, what do you think? Four and two, upside down, as we mentioned in September. Three straight wins, all in Big 12 play. Well, the, the key one is the bottom right there. Seven turnovers, which is the fewest in the Big 12. And if they're going to continue to win like they have been over the last three weeks, they need to keep doing that. Gray lines up behind McCoy. Again, gets the carry past the 45. He was following his tight end, Jeff Swain. Nice block to open up a hole and a pick up a five. He'll be second down and five. Three wide receivers set up top, again on the ground. Gray, maybe a yard. He'll call it two yards to the 43. Clock runs. Jonathan Gray, first three games. Just one touchdown. The last three he's come on offensively. He's been in the end zone three times, and now this crowd stands on third down and four. McCoy swings it out on the hands of Gray. Oh, what an open field tackle. Jason Ferret. And there's a reason he's an All-American there, Craig. Absolutely. He was the only guy out there against a pretty shifty back in Jonathan Gray, and he just wrapped him up immediately. Didn't even give him a chance to make a move. Anthony Farah. Senior from Cypress, Texas. Trots on for his second putt. Try to punch it high, and he does. And the fair catch, Eccles Looper takes it, 22-yard line. A 21-yard boot. Scoreless in Fort Worth. Well, here in Fort Worth, Eamon Carter Stadium here, 
reopened in 2012. The reconstruction costs $164 million. The first game in the new facility was against Grambling last year. TCU won a national title in 38 and 39. How about Davey O'Brien, the quarterback, won their lone Heisman in 38. And they're now in their second season in the Big 12 Conference. They made the big jump, and this stadium is beautiful. It's a fantastic place for college football. Great intimate environment, great fans. We've got a heck of an environment tonight. Boykin. Trying to run out of trouble. Maybe, Joey, the old gunslinger you are, waited just a half a beat too long to escape. Well, that, that's, that's what Greg Robinson has brought to this defense. They have talented players all over the place, and they're playing loose and free, exposing the center of this offensive line for TCU that has really had struggles up to this point in the season. Loss of eight yards. Here's Greg Robinson, defensive coordinator. Been out of the game a couple of years. He was hired in July as a and as an evaluator, and then after that debacle against, as the run is at the 26-yard line. After against BYU, Manny Diaz was fired. Robinson came on, took over in week three. He only had three days to, to prepare against Ole Miss, and since then he's won three straight. We have this defense is finally settling down and just playing loose. They're not thinking, they're just cutting loose and playing, and they have NFL-type talent all over the defense, both corners, defensive end, they got a couple guys in the middle. They're just playing, they're just playing football. TCU goes empty in the backfield, five wide, as Boykin feels pressure from the edge, steps up, nowhere to go. How about that? Aggressive play by Texas. There's a fumble on the field. Adrian Phillips covered it up. The strong safety 17. It came out late, and Texas pounced on the football. Well, again, Jackson Jeffco from the defensive end position loops back inside, going right through the center of this TCU offensive line and gets in and causes a fumble by Trevon Boykin. Not what you wanted to have happen if you're the TCU team right now after a fast start, a lot of energy in the stadium, a big turnover deep in your own territory, and essentially just giving Texas an opportunity to punch it in. Phillips, three-year letterman, Garland, Texas. He was beat up a little bit against Oklahoma with a stinger as he ran on top of that football and Texas on the front door. They're knocking. Hand off up the middle. Malcolm Brown. Oh, the turnover stings, and Texas takes it in. This is a pretty simple play, just a power. Pull the guard around from the backside. Walters gets in there. Follow your fullback, and Malcolm Brown just walks into the end zone. Extra point. Splits the uprights. Farah now 25 of 26 in PATs. The fumble. Boykin laid it out there like a loaf of bread. And then the touchdown, a three-yard run by Brown, and just like that, Texas on the road, up by seven. And after that fumble by Boykin, Casey Paul Hall, who's been out since week two, looks like he snapped the headgear on and is ready to take the helm of Texas, of TCU, and Texas awaits. Gary Patterson, I think he's got a short fuse. Well, he has to. I mean, TCU cannot afford to give up those type of turnovers. And we talked about it a minute ago, especially in the first half. They have to stay close with Texas offensively because TCU's defense has given them every chance in the world to win the last three weeks. Four turnovers last week by TCU. And an early one here cost them seven. Kick, goal line. That's Gray. Turns on the Burners cartwheel to the 19-yard line. Time for a Lowe's Never Stop Improving game break. Here's Patrick O'Neill. All right, thanks very much. Well, eighth-ranked Baylor at Kansas and the nation's best offense at it again. Lake Seastrunk, 29 yards. Now, it's now 28 to nothing. 
Baylor's 40th touchdown drive of two minutes or less. That now ties Joey's Oregon Ducks. Best of the nation. Right back to you. All right, thank you, Patrick. What a talent he is. Now the crowd's excited because Paul Hall returns at quarterback, but Boykin's on the, on the field as well. And remember, Boykin was a wide receiver before he had to come back and play QB. Multi-talented. How about that cut back? Big hole up the middle goes Aaron Green. Still on his feet and thrown down at the 42-yard line. Well, Coach said we we're going to see a lot more of Aaron Green in this game. Started at Nebraska as a freshman and transferred over. Had to sit out last year. And now that he is becoming more comfortable in what's going on here at TCU, he has the potential to be a game-breaking running back. Yeah, Jared Anderson made it very clear. You will see 22 quite a bit tonight, and he just ripped off his, his number, 22 yards. First down, play of all shotgun. He's got the ball, and he hook slides it down at the 45. At the 45, he'll pick up three. Paul Hall now fractured his left arm in week two. He's got a soft cast built around it to protect it. But five games out, we'll see him tonight, but and Joey, you know this, he is not in game shape by any means. Well, he's not in game shape because of everything he went through last season. Leading up to this year, did not have any time in the weight room or the film room. Got himself back on track, and it's great to see him on the field. Paul Hall on a play action. Throws a dart. It was caught and then dropped. Ladarius Brown would love to have it back. Number 85 had the catch, and it popped out of his hands incomplete. Well, just started to turn his head a little bit too quickly before he got the ball secured. But what a strike thrown by Casey Paul Hall. Doesn't look like he's missed a beat at all. Well, Gary Patterson told us, look, he's been our scout squad quarterback for the last three weeks. He's traveled with the team. He's kind of taken on an assistant coach mentality. And now he's playing football again. Third down, a must-need conversion, down seven here early. Paul Hall steps up, ball batted, incomplete. And coming strong up front, it was both ends, Reed and Jeff Coat. Well, it looked like they had a screen set up coming out from the outside, and the defensive line for Texas just got in there too fast. He didn't have a chance to get the ball off. But again, TCU off the field on a critical third down. Ethan Perry with the punt, a beauty. Fair catch, 12-yard line by Johnson. And McCoy is due back up. Texas leading on the road, up seven. Back in Fort Worth, the visiting Longhorns of Texas on top of TCU here in the opening quarter up by seven. A recovered fumble by the Longhorns. Malcolm Brown, three-yard touchdown. That's the difference. There's Case McCoy. His brother Colt. Two-time Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year with Texas. It just runs in the family. McCoy at the 12. Like they started this game, up the middle they go. Malcolm Brown. Ryan Neese, Texas defense. Oh, have they played with emotion early? They played with a lot of emotion. We've studied them all week long. This is a different defense. In the defensive coordinator had a chance to talk to him before the game, Joey and Craig. And he told me, hey, our guys are athletic. We got four or five star recruits. I'm loving it here. I just allow these guys to pin their ears back and go play football. I make it simple and I make them love the game. And it's been impressive watching them down here on the sidelines, guys. These guys are flying around and making some big time plays, especially that front line. Joey, I think the word from Ryan is this Robinson made things simple again. Just go play. Well, that's what you need to do with, with this Texas team on both sides of the ball that has talent all over the place. Third down and four. Long snap count. McCoy's got it. Pedals back pressure. Clean 
throws it short. There's a flag out 29 yard line. Pressure was coming from McFarland, number 40. We'll get the call from Scott Novak. Holding. Defense number two. 10 yard penalty. First down. So the hold called on Verrett, the All American and a quarter finalist for the Lot Impact Trophy. Oh, he's good. Jason Verrett is, is by far the best player on this TCU defense, and he deserves every accolade that comes his way. Texas with a first and 10 now, clock at the 517 mark. They'll stay on the ground. How about that? Tackle knee high. Paul Dawson sent Brown flying to the 31 yard line. Well, this TCU defense is not making it easy for Texas right now. They are flying all over the place. On a play action goes McCoy. Steps up in the pocket on a sidearm pass. He's got his man, Shipley. Looks like a face mask. Yep, there comes the flags right at the 49 yard line. Jackson Shipley, 33rd reception. Kevin White was there, but put a hand on the mask. Personal foul, face mask on the defense number 25. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, that makes it 30 straight games Jackson Shipley has had a reception. After cutting back to the inside here, Kevin White just gets his hand in there and, and yanks the face mask. But Jackson Shipley has become Case McCoy's security blanket. Every time there's a big third down conversion needed, he's looking for Jackson Shipley. Pushes to the 31 yard line and again the tight end Swain with a lead block. Let's go downstairs. Here's Ryan. Joe, you made a great point about Josh Shipley being Case McCoy's security blanket. One of the things he does a great job, he turns his numbers around, he does a great job running routes and getting open and finding those holes. You gotta love a wide receiver like that as a quarterback. Down goes in motion. Jay Johnson. Major, Major Apple White mixing things up on the offensive end for Texas. Oh, yeah, Dodge Johnson was a running back two years ago, moved from wide receiver this year. You're going to see him out of the backfield. You're going to see him in wide out position. You're going to see him returning kicks. This guy is, is the, the piece they will move all over the field. They just got to find a way to get the ball into his hands. Shipley, the motion man, third down again. They need three to move the chains. Low snap. McCoy, one punt, slings it. And again, the ball falls short. He's not known, Joey, for the arm. The legs are his forte. Case McCoy just tried to fire one in there. And, and it fell low. If he'd have put it up over the top, he could have given the receiver a chance for a touchdown. But, but Case is just a great... He's, he's a smart football player. He's not a big arm guy. He's not the fastest guy in the world. He's just a very smart football player. This will be a 43-yard attempt by Anthony Farah. Kicks up. And good it is from 43. And Texas builds a 10-0 lead here in the opening quarter. You know, this week we asked our Facebook fans which team has been the biggest surprise this season. And Joey's here how is here is how they responded. I mean, this is a runaway. 73% Mizzou, 12% the Baylor Bears, 8% Auburn, and 7% voted for Texas Tech. But I think I have to agree. Missouri, I think, has shocked a lot of folks in college football. Well, I completely agree. You don't ever think of Missouri especially when you have teams like Alabama, Texas A&M, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, LSU at the top of the SEC. You don't think of Missouri as a powerhouse, but they're number five in the country in the BCS and are turning some heads. Ten nothing Texas. Nick Rose has it teed up. Gray back to receive. Here we 
we go. So far, TCU has hurt themselves. They've been having to move the football. Gray has a hole, tripped up 25-yard line. And Joey, we're going to find out along with the sellout crowd tonight, and those watching, is it Paul Hall or Boykin? Well, I think Paul Hall has to be involved if you're in, if you're going to improve on this three and four season so far. Defensively, like you can see at the bottom, they lead the Big 12 in both sacks and interceptions, but it's been offensive consistency that's been the problem for TCU. Casey Paul Hall looked sharp in his first series back, and if he can continue to do that, this, this TCU offense can get a little drive going, get some momentum, and really contribute on the other side from the defense. Let the snap off the six on the play clock. Jordan Moore, the ball carrier off the right side. Let's get a thought on Paul Hall from Ryan Neese. Craig and Joey, I was standing on the sidelines, and you could see all the offensive players that had a light in their eyes, that energy, and they were all coming up to Casey. Hey, let's keep it going. You're doing a great job. We're behind you. You could see this team really rallying it behind him. You've got to be excited to have a leader like that, a quarterback, energizing your offense. He was just finding his way, guys, when he was injured against southeastern Louisiana and broke his left forearm. Is Jordan Moore. He's getting some carries. We'll see Aaron Green as well. So 22 and 29 right now have taken over for Wayman James and B.J. Catalan. First down Horn Frogs. They average 75 plays a game. A little more methodical here. They stack two wide receivers up high. They spread two wide receivers down low. Paul Hall on a quick slant. It's caught. Yardage for David Porter. Nice move. A pickup of nearly 14 yards to the 46-yard line. And a great decision and great release by Casey Paul Hall there. There was no hesitation. Wide receiver gets inside of Quandre Diggs, finds the zone, and Casey just delivers the ball. Don't wait. Just get it out of your hands. Here's a hurry up. Quick pitch. Carter. Near side, out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Now you see TCU getting a little tempo going here. They're not known for the fast pace, but they're trying to build on this momentum. They've got Texas's defense on their heels a little bit. Ball hole now will jump under center. Quick throw, near side. Here's a little trickery. A top on the button. Touchdown. Echoes Looper finds Ladarius Brown and Gary Patterson throws a little Houdini at Texas. Craig, this play was set up perfectly by the quick screen of play before. Great play calling by TCU. That's playground football. You draw it up in the sand, and <laughs> there you go. Overcrumb with the PAT. That's how you get back in a football game. The crowd at home is behind you, and it's 10-7 at the 124 mark. Boy, Paul Hall has jump-started TCU. Absolutely. He threw the quick screen a moment ago. This time, throws the ball out to the same position as the quick screen, but the wide receiver backed up, so the backwards pass. Here it is. Looks like he's going to block downfield. Instead, just slips by. All the defenders thinking they're going to try and continue on that quick play momentum. And instead, they go deep with a double pass. Great play calling by TCU. And wide open, Ladarius Brown for his first touchdown reception of the season. <laughs> Five plays, 70 yards for TCU, and Paul Hall celebrates. It's one of those quick hits, quick hit series like a Baylor. A minute 37 off the clock, kicks away, two yard line. Johnson spins out of the tackle, couple flags come out. Return, holding, 
receiving team, number 19. 10-yard penalty. First down. So holding the call on Texas, let's get a game break back to Los Angeles. Here's Patrick O'Neill. All right, UCLA at number three, Oregon. Now, DeAnthony Thomas is playing, but while he was out with that ankle injury, the nation saw how good Byron Marshall was. Here he goes, 40 yards. Marshall, the touchdown. It's 14 to 7. Hundley just got picked off for UCLA in the red zone. They're in the second quarter. Craig, enjoy back to you. Oregon can strike fast. We saw them last week. Now Texas, Joey pushed back at the 10-yard line after the penalty. They stay on the ground, big hole. Up the middle, here comes Brown. Well, you're stuck back inside the 10, and you rumble to the 26-yard line, knocked down by Hackett and Olivo. And you see what just the, just the threat of a reverse can do for the holes on the offensive line. Earlier they ran the reverse with Johnson, this time they fake it, and the hole just opened up for Malcolm Brown. Texas averages over 200 yards a game on the ground. Last week, 255 in the win against Oklahoma, I'd just say, prior to the bye week. The Browns doing most of the heavy lifting. He had 120 carries in that win against Oklahoma. 23 carries, 120 yards. Craig, you're going to see Malcolm Brown and Jonathan Gray both in the backfield. And you may see another player, Joe Bergeron. They have three very talented backs at Texas. Second down 11, misdirection to the 30-yard line. Swain again out there throwing blocks for Brown. And the final seconds of this opening quarter winding down. 10-7, TCU trailing Texas. Matt Brown, there you saw him, 16th year. Since I don't listen to critics, because I have a tight group of, of people that I trust. He's been under fire, made that quick decision to change D coordinators, and things turned around. We played 15 minutes in Fort Worth, and the Longhorns strike early, up 10, and then TCU just found the end zone. A little trickery. It's a three-point game in Fort Worth. We'll be back on Fox Sports 1. Let's check in our Chevrolet stat comparison. TCU just 17 rush yards. They've got 100 total yards, and they've got six first downs compared to five for Texas. First downs haven't come easy of late. No, they have not, especially in the first half for TCU. But Casey Ballhall has provided such a spark for that TCU offense. All right, let's listen in. Third down five as we start quarter number two. McCoy, short to Shipley. Sam Carter on coverage. Texas now 0 for 4 on third down conversion. And Texas has 10 points, but in reality, they haven't done a whole lot on offense. This TCU defense has played very well. They only had to go three yards to get that touchdown. And as we would come to expect from a Gary Patterson defense, TCU is doing a great job up front and really kind of confusing Case McCoy right now. Farah back inside his own 20-yard line to punt. Flags out. Hangs it high to the 21-yard line. Eccles Looper makes the fair catch, but a flag back at the 30. Legal formation on a kicking team. Five players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. So the lad five. It'll be TCU football. The new season of the Ultimate Fighter is powerful, relentless, epic, and it's just getting started. Catch the show. Critics say delivers the goods and see why they call Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate the new best rivalry in sports. It's a marathon of the Ultimate Fighter starting Tuesday at 7 Eastern. They catch an all-new episode Wednesday at 10, only on Fox Sports 1. For the five yards, gives the football to TCU just past through the 26-yard line. And Paul Hall is on for his third series. Straight away handoff, Aaron Green tried to hit.
hit the edge, and he's pushed back by Texas. He'll lose two forward progress to the 20-yard line, and it was Chris Whaley, the D-tackle number 96. Chris Whaley has been a great player for Texas last week, excuse me, two weeks ago against Oklahoma, had that interception return for a touchdown. And what a, what a thrill that had to be for him. It isn't very often that those big men up front get to waltz their way into the end zone. A loss of two, second down, 12. Paul Hall in the pocket, throws it, finds his man on the hands of Carter. And he wiggles past the 35. I love the second effort, so is the crowd. He'll pick up two extra yards on that second effort. It took Edmund and Thompson to wrestle him down for Texas. We mentioned it earlier. Brandon Carter has the potential to be a fantastic receiver, but has had to learn to play within this TCU offense. Coach Patterson said a few weeks ago when we talked to him that if Brandon doesn't learn how to play within the scheme, he's not going to play. And he's done a good job of scaling things back, playing with, with his mind, not just with his body. Now another important third down try. They need two yards to keep the drive alive. Off the left side goes Aaron Green. Oh, there's purple and white, and just enough to move the chains. Gary Patterson, he'll wear a, a hole in that grass tonight. TCU, Paul Hall, 3 of 5 for 30. Malone, or more that is, three rushes, 14 yards. They're just chipping away at Texas. Quick throw, looked like it was down low on the ground. It's now whistled incomplete. It was Brandon Carter, the intended receiver. Boy, Casey Paul Hall's arm looked pretty live oh. right there. I mean, this guy is a big, strong arm player, six foot five. And two years ago, in 2011, threw for nearly 3,000 yards, 25 touchdowns. Last year, before he he took his leave from the team, had already had just about 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. I mean, this guy can throw the football, but he's been away for a while and needs to work his way back into things. Clock, clock, play clock to six. Paul Hall on a rollout. Sets his feet, throw a ball, nearly picked off at the 43-yard line. And up high to nearly pick it away was Steve Edmond, number 33, the Will, weak side linebacker. And boy, that was a fantastic play because Casey Ball had his receiver open right over the top. Edmond just puts, puts the big paw up there and gets a fingertip. Otherwise, it's another TCU first down. Yo, he nearly one-handed that ball. <laughs> Third down, 10. Moore and Catalan lined up alongside Paul Hall. From the 30, deep, up top. Little push, no call. Went up top. Oh, my. What a grab. Josh Duxon. What a catch by the sophomore. Great throw and catch by Paul Hall and Duxon. They're going right after the... The all-conference player in Carrington bind him, and Paul Hall just gave his receiver a chance to go up and make the play. Bind him making his 33rd start for the Longhorns. That was a 34-yard pickup. Hey, Craig, so often you see a quarterback trying to be so precise on that deep ball, he either overthrows it or throws it out of bounds, trying to drop it on that outside shoulder. Casey Paul Hall made a terrific throw, putting it up high and allowing his receiver to have a chance to make a play on Running play, shut down, Catalan shot down at the 31, a loss of at least three. And guess who it was again right there? Jackson Jeffcoat getting into the backfield. Well, I tell you what, he has really emerged and started to thrive under Greg Robinson here. He leads the team, excuse me, five sacks on the year, leads not only the team, but the Big 12. But he also leads the team with quarterback pressures and tackles for loss. Jackson Jeffcoat has become a force on the defensive side. TCU wants a timeout. They get it on second down and 13. We'll step aside. Horn Frogs down three on Fox Sports 1.
Welcome back to Fort Worth. I'm Ryan Neese, and this is a lively game, Joey and Craig. We see Patterson on the sideline. Coach, Head, Coach Patterson getting a little fired up with Coach Jared Anderson, the offensive coordinator. These guys are intense. They need this energy to continue to carry over to the offense and the defense. you got to love that about Patterson. He gets fired up. To say the least, Ryan, an emotional man on the football field. Paul Hall throws, picked. He threw it right to Steve Edmund. And Edmund runs it back to the 21-yard line. Joey, was that Russ or a misread? No, that was a great read. He had Catalan running right up the sideline, but Craig, I've been in this position. You don't want to lay the ball out. There he is. Instead of laying it up and over the top, he tried to put it right on him. Came out a little bit low and ended up right in the bread basket of Edmonds. I've been there. I've been there. You just don't want to miss it. You don't want to overthrow it, so you try and put it right on him and stop him. He just let the ball go a little bit too low. Air may have been his best friend on that throw. <laughs> exactly. Let him run under it. Second turnover here in the first half for TCU. Texas at the 21-yard line up by three. Play clock to three, to two. McCoy stands, there's a puck. He wants a deep ball, and he overthrows. Mike Davis, the little pump. And he overthrows Davis. Well, yeah, he saw Mike Davis isolated on Chris Hackett out here. A safety thought he could get a double move on him because Mike Davis is the speed guy. If you can just create a little bit of separation, Mike can generally run by people. But Hackett had so much of a cushion that he wasn't biting on it. Well, so far in this game, McCoy just two of six passing for 21 yards. Second down, straight away. Banging is Gray for two, maybe three. Gray had the 29 carries, 123 yards. As I mentioned, Malcolm Brown had 23 carries for 120. I'd say it's rare you get 100-yard rushers against Oklahoma. Well, let alone two of them. But these guys, both of them, Gray and Brown, are fantastic talents, both NFL-type talents. And if one's not going, the other one, they've got the luxury of giving it to the other one. Mike Davis near side, three wide receivers up top, third down long. Low snap, McCoy, pressured, throws on a slant in the middle of the field, and it's a first down, 35-yard line. Marcus Johnson, the catch, and Derek Kindred brought him down, 26 for TCU. McCoy now in a hurry-up offense after the first down play action. Dances with those feet a bit, and the ball pops out. Again, trying to run before you make the catch. The ball's incomplete to Gray. Well, Texas installed this up-tempo offense in anticipation of David Ash being their quarterback. David Ash was, is more of the runner, has great speed. But now that Case McCoy is in, Offense coordinator Major Appleway has done a great job of tailoring that to Case's strengths, which is reading a defense and getting the team into the right play. Second down. To Shea Johnson, second carry of the night, maybe a yard. Clock runs up on 10 minutes left in the first half, and now Joey a third down and nine. Well, this is the exact situation that you want the Longhorns to be in if you're a TCU defense. Third and long in their own territory. The crowd is, is in this ball game. TCU has it going on defense right now. One of five on third down conversions. Another low snap. McCoy has time. Pedal throws. Has a man open right on the button. It's Marcus Johnson. Takes it to the house. Touchdown, Texas. Sixty-five yards. And watch Marcus Johnson go to the flat and just turn up the field on a wheel, a wheel route. A natural pick by his wide receiver, and he was running clean up the sideline. What Case McCoy did there is what Paul Hall failed to do on the drive before. Throw the ball up, let his wide out get it run under it instead of trying to drill it onto him. Great throwing catch by Case McCoy and Marcus Johnson. 
Anthony Farrell with the PAT. It's up and good. 65 yard strike. McCoy goes deep in Texas on the road. They open up a 10 point lead on TCU. Hey guys, watch the route here. They're gonna run a wheel route up the sideline, but here's the key is there gonna be a little bit of a pick by Mike Davis when he runs his curl on the flat defender who should be running with this wheel, wheel route in quarters coverage right there. Just enough of a bump to free Marcus Johnson to run wide open up the sideline. Well, discussion about the secondary. I say this is an emotional ball game. This is one of those games that TCU needs to turn their season back around. Maybe surprise some folks that McCoy got the ball deep, 65 yards. Johnson takes it, 10 point lead for Texas. By the way, Joey, that's the eighth play this season of 50 yards or more for the Longhorns. Like we said, they have playmakers everywhere. They're an explosive offensive team. Line drive kick, a yard deep. Catalan is knocking down hard at the 22. Tomorrow, it's game four of the World Series at 8 Eastern, and stay tuned during the fifth inning for the exclusive final trailer debut of the Hunger Games, Catching Fire. It's all part of Catching Fire Sunday on Fox. Now the boys of October continue to play. Here it's Texas 17, TCU 7. Paul Hall back at it. He'll start this drive at the 22 and a half yard line. Play action, quick throw. Up high, making the grab. Brown, who cut that touchdown on that double pass from Eccles Looper. Adrian Phillips with the tackle. Second down and five. These are the situations that TCU hasn't been in the last few weeks. Second and manageable. Your playbook opens up completely when you're in second and five, second and four, as opposed to second and ten. Paul Hall, just a little behind the intended receiver. That ball falls incomplete. And it was quick pressure up the middle by the strong safety Phillips. Well, you see Kapal Hall right there talking to his wide receiver. He needs to do a better job, the wide up does, of recognizing the blitz that came off the edge. Casey was telling him, hey, you're my hot guy. You've got to break in quick because I have a free rusher coming in my face. Now third down and five. Step drop throws. It's incomplete. And again, through the hand, the hands of Brown. Bind him. The corner, the corner was on coverage with number 85. Greg, okay, you're not you're not gonna have a whole lot of wide open receivers if you're TCU because these Texas corners might be some of the best in the country. Carrington Bindham and Quandre Diggs are both all-conference. Quandre's an all-American. You're gonna have to make some tight throws and some big catches when you're playing against Texas in second game. Welcome to Ethan Perry's world. No snap, he gets it away. Johnson with the catch. He didn't call for a fair, he's on his feet. He's hit and knocked back to the 32 yard line. They'll mark him at the 34. We've got a timeout in Fort Worth, Texas by 10. Longhorns are all lined up in a row. Pretty neat bench right now. <laughs> By taking a breather. <laughs> up 17-7. Lot of purple. You see the orange of the Longhorns. 8.44 left, first half. Case McCoy goes back to work. Right up the gut goes Jonathan Gray. I think, Craig, that's the third time we've seen that action by Dajay Johnson on the reverse 
once they gave it to him, twice they faked it, but on the two times that they faked the reverse, it's opened up the holes inside. Because what it does to a defense is it forces them to stay wide and play contained because that, that reverse could get out there, so they can't jam things up inside. Almost a free play, Joey. Second down two from McCoy. Play action. McCoy swings it near side. Pitch and catch. Mike Davis with the reception. And Verrett makes the tackle. In case McCoy goes right at the All-American, Jason Verrett with Mike Davis. But Mike Davis, he, he's a burner. This guy can run. And so Verrett, even though he's a fantastic corner, has to give him some space. Mike, Mike Davis stopped his route. Easy pitch and catch for, for Case McCoy and Davis. 15 career touchdowns for Mike Davis. He had one last week against Oklahoma for 38 yards. Here comes a reverse. Johnson. And this time, TCU. Boy, they're smart. They've stayed at home a yard on the gain as they try to set up Johnson with another big play. Well, this is the second time Jason Verrett has made an open field tackle and saved a big play. You know, we talked about the reverse a moment ago. Off the zone action by the running back. This time they pitched it back to him, and Verrett was right there to make the play. There's over seven minutes left. Clock runs here in Fort Worth. McCoy, shotgun. Second down nine. Sets his feet, goes up top. And it's incomplete. They wanted Johnson again. Ran into to Sam Car uh, Carter, the strong safety. Looks like there was a little, com it looked like yeah. a little confusion between Case McCoy and Dajay Johnson. Case threw it as if he was going to continue up the sideline. Dajay stopped his route, maybe thinking he was going to get a back shoulder ball because the defender was playing over the top of him and walling him off from going deep. Joey Texas, 2 of 6 on third down conversions. Here's a big one, third down 9. And this crowd knows it. McCoy, delayed draw. TCU closes the game. Big number 98, John Lewis, defensive tackle, made the initial hit, and that brings up punting situation now for the Longhorns. Well, I don't necessarily think there's a bad call. Texas has been playing well on defense. You got a 10-point lead. You've got a crowd that is kind of settling down. There's, there's no harm in trying to get trying to catch TCU's defense off guard, and if you don't get it, you punt and pin TCU's offense back in their own territory. Farah. Boots it up high. Oh my, beautiful play by the special teams. Are they gonna wave it as a touch back or is it down? We'll come back to Fort Worth after this. 17-7, Longhorns. Joey, we know what a Longhorn is. Can you tell me what a... A horn frog is all about. A horn frog is that thing that we saw there, yeah, right? A little spooky. <laughs> no, I think this is really cool. A horn frog isn't actually a frog; it's a lizard, right? But when it gets into attack mode, it shoots blood out of its eyes, which is what the helmet is supposed to represent for TCU. You see that red streak. Oh my! I saw the wow. lightning. I saw the lightning just a little, uh, a few seconds ago, but it's close enough that we're going to take both teams off the field. Well, and as you were so as you were talking there, we saw it right over the edge of the stadium. That's a smart decision. So Mac Brown, Gary Patterson, take their headsets off and they lead their teams to the locker rooms. We'll take a break. We'll take you back to Patrick O'Neill after this on Fox Sports One. Guys, it's great to be back with you after uh, over a three-hour rain and lightning delay here in Fort Worth, Texas, and uh, we're going to play football again. We're still here? We're still here. 
and we're going to play football between Texas and TCU. Let's talk about what's happened at this point. Let's start, Joey, with Texas on top by 10. Well, Je Texas jumped out early because of a fumble deep in TCU's territory, but TCU came right back with a double pass. They set it up beautifully on a couple quick screens, but Case McCoy hits Johnson up the sideline on a beautiful wheel route. And that's about, what, about three hours ago? Three hours ago. There you go. I had to remember what happened. And then the lightning and the thunder came at 6.08 left in the second quarter. This field has taken a lot of rain. And Ryan Neese, how much more could it take? Craig and Joey, I'll tell you what. I've been down here messing around with the field to try to get a feel for what it felt like. And I'll tell you, this field is in great condition. It can handle 16 inches of rain per hour. It has a six feet to eight feet of sand below it to absorb all the moisture. The players are going to be fine on this surface. They're going to run around. I can't believe it feels so good. It feels like a little dew. These guys are going to be fine on the surface. All right. Uh, so we're going to play football, and we're going to pick it up at the 20-yard line. It remembered it, it followed after a punt that went into the end zone and a touchback. And TC will have the football down by a count of 17 to 7. Officially a three-hour, five-minute weather delay. Texas scoring 14 points off two TCU turnovers. And Joey, I think mentally for both these teams, it's maybe just a fresh start. Oh, it's a completely new ballgame. Any momentum that you had three hours ago is gone. So Casey Paul Hall, who came in after two series by Trevon Boykin, seems to have sparked this TCU team before the lightning and rain hit. And they're going to start on the ground to the 26-yard line, and Aaron Green, the ball carrier. Well, three hours ago, we saw Aaron Green do that exact same thing. He has been a, a, a real spark to this TCU running game. Second down after a five-yard gain. Two wide receivers stacked on both high and low, top of the field and the bottom. Paul Hall shotgun. It's on the left side. First down, move the chains at the 32-yard line. Aaron Green, the early go-to guy. And digs the corner with the tackle. Let's go downstairs. Ryan Neese, uh, some changes have been made. I know halftime will be shortened. Greg, this is a really unique situation. The teams are going to play the last remaining six minutes of the second quarter. Then they're going to go into a halftime, a five-minute halftime. It's only like a recess, and then they're going to begin the third quarter, and then obviously play the fourth quarter after that. It's a very unique situation, but the players now have to adjust to that, and they have to find a way to finish out the second quarter. All right. Uh, thank you, Ryan. We're commercial free up until halftime, Joey. So uh, we'll continue to, to go play-by-play play here. And as Ryan said, a very unique situation here tonight in Fort Worth. Texas shows blitz, and Paul Hall takes a glance sideline. Aaron Green, the lone back with 22 on his jersey. Second down, two. And again, the handoff to Green, knocked down by Jeff Kyo to lose one. Hey, Craig, here's something I think is really interesting. We didn't see this formation from TCU before the break. They've got a double stacked high and low. This might be something that they, an adjustment they made during that long layoff. How about Paul Hall? On a quarterback keeper. And the clock runs up on four minutes. I have to ask you, Joey, concerns? For these players, a three-hour rest didn't get a lot of warm-up time. Well, you know, everybody's in the same situation. Everybody's in the same boat. They've all been sitting down. They're cold. And they've all come and, and had to warm up in the same short period. Fourth and one, TCU. And now a timeout, and with that timeout for TCU, Ryan, you played at the college and pro level. Your thoughts about warm-up and safety for these players? you got to be a little bit concerned with player safety in this situation, Craig and Joey. One of my biggest concerns is, you know, what, what do these guys do in the field of their body? They've been sitting down for the last three hours. I know they've been hungry. They've almost played a, a full half prior to that stoppage. Now all of a sudden they got to come back. They got to fuel their bodies. Their bodies are cold. They got to find a way not only to fuel their bodies with food. They got to warm themselves back up. That's hard. To
to do. I mean, just imagine any of us trying to go run for two hours, stopping, going to sit on our couch and laying down, and trying to fire our engines back up to go run for another two hours. That's extremely challenging to do. Hopefully, these young guys will, you know, they're resilient, Craig, and enjoy, but hopefully they were able to come back and be healthy and finish out this game strong. Indeed. So after the timeout, Gary Patterson decides, let's punt the football. Ethan Perry is on the field, back at his 30-yard line. Pressure by Texas, punt is away, fair catch taken, 22-yard line. Diggs waved his hand, and so Texas will have the ball, up by a count of 17-7. McCoy seemed calm and confident, Joy, before the Lightning came to town. Well, that, that's been his M.O. all year. That's, that's his style of football. He's been... He's been smart with the football up to this point of the year. Four touchdowns, only one interception. Had thrown 124 passes in a row without an interception. His job, and Coach Mack Brown had said it, is to be a facilitator, to manage the game, to get the ball into the hands of Jonathan Gray and Mike Davis and Jackson Shipley. And, and he's done that very well up to this point this season. And he's got a great core of running backs as well to use. And they throw one out of the backfield. Off to Johnson. Number four to Jay Johnson. He was a spark plug in that first quarter of play as the clock runs up on three minutes left here in the second quarter. Texas came in with a head of steam, winning three games in a row, including last week against Oklahoma. They'll lose two on that play, second down and long. McCoy, shotgun. Jonathan Gray tries the heart of TCU. We saw that quite a bit to start this game over three hours ago. But that's the M.O. of Texas. They're going to run it at you. They had 255 yards last week against Oklahoma. Well, that's what Coach, Coach Applewhite told us in our conversation with him this week is one of the great things about Case McCoy is he knows when to get the team into the proper runs, and they were running the ball a lot in that first quarter. McCoy needs 10 yards for a first down. Low snap handled by McCoy. Sets in the pocket, runs out. Sling shots at far side and nearly picked off by TCU. Good coverage and now the Longhorns will have to punt away and give credit to big number 98. Moving fast off the line, put the pressure, John Lewis, on McCoy. Well, the D-line doing a good job of flushing Case McCoy out, but Jason Verrett, the All-American corner, nearly coming up with a big interception right there. He had two huge plays at the start of this game three and a half hours ago, but they were tackles in the open in the open field, which didn't allow Texas to make big plays. Anthony Farrell inside his own 10-yard line set to punt. TCU should have good field position. Cameron Eccles Looper awaits. Good punt. Haynes caught 35, waves his arm and a fair catch. And that's where TCU will start their second drive here in the second quarter after the weather delay. Make sure you visit ADT.com slash sports to enter for a chance to win an ADT security and home automation system. That's ADT.com slash sports. I'll tell you, a good chunk of this crowd has hung around for this football game. The student section did never move. The student section was standing in that rain for a good hour. Numbers thus far. Both teams have had moments of moving the football. Paul Hall caught from behind and dropped at the 29-yard line by Jeff Coat. And that's his sixth sack of the year, which will add to his Big 12 leading total. You know, Craig, the offensive line for TCU, especially the inside, the guard, center guard, has struggled this year. And what, T what Texas was doing early in the game is they were looping Je Jeff Coat inside. That time he just came off the edge got pressure on Paul Hall and came up with the sack. Jeff Code now with 20 and a half career sacks at Texas. A loss of six, second down 16. 
Uh -huh. Gave the ball up to Catalan, number 23. Tried to wiggle for extra yards. Only two to the 31. And he was hit by the will. Weak side linebacker, Steve Edmond. Third down conversions. They've had some struggles. Two of six in this game. They need 15. Paul Hall pressured. Throws the ball on the hands, and it came right off Doxon. And it's almost as if Doxon wasn't quite ready for that ball. It looked like it surprised him a little bit. Casey Paul Hall put the ball in the perfect spot right in front of him on the run. Watch him coming across here. Perfect spot, one foot in front of his numbers to allow him to run versus man coverage and separate. Dotson just got to come up with that catch. You would agree that's a catchable ball. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Even Ryan East could have caught that one. I think maybe. So Perry in again to punt for the second time since the weather cleared. Gets a nice one off. Jay Johnson, fair catch, and they're going to mark him at the... 32 as that ball was out of bounds. 50 seconds left in this first half. Again, as Ryan mentioned, we'll take a five-minute halftime. Both teams will stay on the field, and then we'll resume play. So far in this game, McCoy, 108 yards and a touchdown. Brown with 34 yards on eight carries. And Marcus Johnson, two catches for 77 and a touchdown. We know those stats are a little misleading as, as Marcus Johnson had that big touchdown catch up the sideline. You take that play out, and TCU's done a very nice job of, of sewing in this Texas offense. McCoy, handoff straight ahead, a yard, as Paul Dawson made the initial hit. A little slow. Back on his feet, the middle linebacker out of Dallas. See, I like this TCU defense, Joey. I tell you, they run good linebackers and they are a hard-hitting secondary oh the secondary is the key to this to this defense the all-american jason Verrett, but they've got two great safeties elijah olabode sam carter who will come up and, and make tackles at line of scrimmage second down eight final seconds of the second quarter the ball is aired out deep over the shoulder catch right on target to mike davis 19-yard line. And they went right at the All-American Jason Verrett there. Mike Davis is the speed guy, and that's exactly what he uses. He just runs right by him. Perfectly thrown ball by Case McCoy, dropping it right over the shoulder. And a huge play for Texas. And as the clock is winding out here at six seconds left, Texas is going to take a 44-yard field goal attempt. First now Texas will try or take a timeout. <laughs> Couple of coaches tonight, long tenured. Mac Brown on one side, Gary Patterson the other. Patterson 13 years at TCU. Mac Brown 16 with the Longhorns. It's very rare this day and age in college football to see guys stay that long. Well, one, choose to stay that long, or two, have enough success to be kept around. It speaks volumes to what they've each done at their respective programs. Oh, a long time ago. Joey, don't forget, TC won the toss. They chose to defer, so after this five-minute halftime that's approaching, they will have the ball to start the third quarter. And now the field goal attempt by Farah. It's a chip shot up. And good. So Texas adds to their lead of 20-7. to seven. And what do you know? We have hit halftime. The score 20 to 7, Texas. We'll be back for the second half coming up after these messages.
And a big welcome back to Fox College Football presented by Geico here in Fort Worth, Texas tonight. Three hours and change, rain and lightning delay, but we're back. Second half just around the corner. Craig Bowler, Jack Joey Harrington. My question, do you stay with the original game plan? You know what? It's interesting. Never before, and I doubt never after, you have this much time to make adjustments. You know, they each team was able to see what the opposer game plan was, and they've had three hours to yeah. make adjustments in the locker room. You could see a completely different game plan from each team, or you could see exactly what they thought they were going to and they could stick right with it. It's it's a, such a unique situation. I'm interested to see how each coach plays it. Well, finally, the first half stats are in. I think you look at the turnovers. Texas scored, Joey, 14 points off those two giveaways by the by TCU. Well, one of them was at their own three-yard line by TCU, which set up Texas's first touchdown, a Malcolm Brown three-yard run. So here we go, third quarter underway. Short kick, six-yard line. Breaks one tackle and another. Watch out, puts the pedal down. And he's bounced out at the 47-yard line. Love that second effort by B.J. Catalan. And let's get a word from Ryan Neese. Joey and Craig, I had a chance to catch up with Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator for the Tex Texas Longhorns. And he said, hey, my guys just got to go to work. I said, coach, how are you going to fire up your play? He said, hey, simply, they got to go to work and be men about this and be professional. A great message from a guy that used to be a professional coach in the NFL. Yeah, Greg Robinson, he took over in week three for Manny Diaz, who was fired after the struggles against Brigham Young. But look at this second effort as he spins out of a tackle, heads to the sideline. And Catalan gives TCU terrific field position to start the second half. Ho Ho on a quick toss far side. But Darius Brown with the reception. And he's at midfield. Paul Hall getting some pretty good reps after being out five weeks after he fractured his left arm week two against southeastern Louisiana. Paul Hall, 79 yards, still trying to find rhythm with his passing game. Aaron Green, 34 yards on six carries. Now Wayman James is in the backfield for TCU, number 32. No gain, maybe a half a yard loss right at the 50-yard line. Cedric Reed was on him, along with Desmond Jackson, number 99 for Texas. Well, Cedric Reed has been outstanding for this Longhorn defense all year long. He leads the team with 42 tackles. He's the only defensive lineman in the Big 12 to lead his team in tackles. That's something you don't see very often from a defensive end. Big third down for Paul Hall, shotgun, slings it, ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. You know, Craig, that's, that's something that you lose when you're gone from the game for so long is that pocket presence, the that innate ability to find a throwing lane. Casey Paul Hall had a wide receiver open. Texas brought the blitz off of that side. The wide out recognized it, ran his hot route. In case he just needs to find a throwing lane in there. He'll, he'll develop that as he continues to play. Jeff Coat with a second batted down ball of the night. Their catch wave four at the 11 yard line. We've got a timeout. Third quarter in Fort Worth, 20 to 7, Texas. Nearly five hours ago, it began as a Texas showdown. The Longhorns took the lead of 17-7, and then the lightning and the rain came. Oh, it rained. It thundered. And we saw plenty of lightning. Three hours and five-minute weather delay, and now we're playing football again in Fort Worth. You know, it's after midnight east, Eastern time. About 11-17 here, Central time. It's going to be Sunday morning before you know it. Not too many times you play football at midnight. Texas with the football first down 11-yard line. Paul Dawson put the helmet and the pads on Malcolm Brown. Well, this running game for Texas, 
which has been a strength for them over the last few weeks. Two weeks ago against Oklahoma, both Malcolm Brown and Jonathan Gray going for over 100 yards has really been, I wouldn't say stuffed, but has, has been held in check by this TCU defense. Well, after the bye week, you thought Texas would be fresh, but again, this game's kind of become even brown now after this three-hour delay. They try the middle again with Brown and a host of purple jerseys right on top. John Lewis was there, number 98, as was Dawson again. Third down nine. Both teams struggling on third down conversions in this game. Which is surprising, Craig. TCU has struggled on third down, but Texas up to this point has not. Brown alongside McCoy. Three-step drop. McCoy lays it up top and waiting and coming back for it. Marcus Johnson. I think TCU is surprised as many of these fans because McCoy is not known for the ability to put the ball downfield. And you know what? Again, the speed of Texas just running right by the defenders of TCU. Sam Carter, a safety, a pretty good cover safety at that, just gets run right by by Marcus Johnson. A gain of 43, so they convert on third down and long, and they've got fresh downs at the 45. McCoy, play action. He's got man coverage. There's plenty of bumps, and a couple of flags now come out, and a beanbag on top of it. They wanted Johnson again, and they went up against Olabog. Now, I'd be surprised if they didn't call this pass interference on all the boat. Pass interference, defense number six, 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, this is the third time in this, well, I guess it's not really a half, since the restart that Texas has gone downfield. They've gone, first time they went after Jason Verrett, this, the second time they went after Sam Carter, now they go after Elijah Olabog. All great cover players, all great defenders, and all of them just getting run by by these Texas wideouts. Texas first down, 30-yard line. Handoff goes to Gray, hits the edge, 25-20. Trying to stay in bounds, they will mark him out at the 23. Take the tight end tonight, Jeff Swain, 82, has blocked and opened some nice holes for his running backs. That's a pickup of nine, second and one. Up the gut, Graham breaks another tackle and powers his way inside the 10. And he's knocked down at the six-yard line. Anderson along with Kevin White. Well, now you're seeing things start to pay off. You wonder at the beginning of the game, so often you see runs go for two yards, three yards, two yards, and you think, why do they keep going back to the well if they're not getting it? Well, because eventually that dam is going to break, and you're seeing it start to break open here a little bit for Texas. In the affirmation, Brown to tail back, get the hand off, he is stuffed. Get right on the numbers. And Olavo makes the initial hit. Did I say the dam was going to break? I meant Kevin White was going to come in and make a huge <laughs> tackle in the backfield. But that, that's, that's typical for TCU. That is a Gary Patterson type of defense. These guys don't give up. They play unconventional style of defense. They play five, three safeties, five DBs in there. And they never give up. They just keep scrapping. Second down and goal. And McCoy now comes out from behind center. And Texas wants a timeout. And they'll get one. Mac Brown will huddle up with McCoy. Up by 13. Yes, football has resumed here in Fort Worth, Texas. And the Longhorns leading 20 to 7. And they are knocking on the door once again. Oh, you got to tip your hat to the fans who waited this game out. Three hours over three hours of weather. 15 possessions this season in the red zone. Nine touchdowns, five field goals for the Longhorns. 
McCoy goes under center. Head up. Past the five. Malcolm Brown takes a couple of Horn Frogs with him to the three. Olavode was hanging on. Now Joey, third down and goal. Seven plays, 86 yards. His current drive at four minutes. Brown pushes the pile and finds his way in for the touchdown. The Texas has come out with a field goal and now a touchdown run by Malcolm Brown. And that was just a hardcore push from Dominic Espinoza, Mason Walters, and Trey Hopkins right in the middle. The three most experienced linemen on that T or excuse me, Texas front just pushed TCU right out of the way, and Malcolm Brown just followed him in. Anthony Farah kicks a PAT, and the lead now jumps to 20. Well, Craig, on this last drive, Texas simply ran right by the TCU defenders. Once up the seam, in case McCoy hitting Johnson for a big play, then Jonathan Gray going outside, making Jason Verrett miss. And then they go right up the gut, follow those big old horses into the end zone to Malcolm Brown. Texas is starting to show the offensive firepower that they have. And even TCU's defense, which is so good and so complicated, so confusing for so many quarterbacks to figure out, even they are starting to wear down a little bit. Well, you saw a TCU now faced with their largest deficit of the year. The four losses, a combined or an average of nine points separated Victory, defeat, and right now they're down a count of 20. They've been in every ball game this year. The Texas now pulling away. Early third quarter, taking at the five-yard line is Catalan. They need a big play. He breaks one at the 40, tripped up. He was a step away from six. Time for a Lowe's never stop improving game break. And here's Patrick O'Neill. All right, well, in a game that started some three hours after your game, Stanford at Oregon State, after the Beavers fumbled the second half kickoff, Tyler Gaffney, nine yard. You can't bring him down. And it's now 13 to three in the third quarter. So far, Stanford D real stingy to Sean Manning. Craig and Joy, back to you. All right, thank you, Patrick. Great bowler, Jack Joey Harrington in the booth, Ryan Neese down on the sidelines tonight here in Fort Worth in the third quarter. Yes, a bit late. After rain and lightning delayed this game for over three hours, TCU with a big hill to climb, and they start on the ground on this drive as Catalan works his way to the 44. And this is the position that TCU could not afford to be playing from. Casey Paul getting his first real time since breaking his arm in week two, having to climb out of a deep hole. I mean, the strength of this TCU team has been their defense, and they've allowed Texas to score 27 points. Paul Hall in the pocket, fires a dart, far side, just a little bit off his game. The intended receiver, Ladarius Brown. Quarterbacks tonight, McCoy is thrown for 195 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Paul Hall, 7 of 17, Joey, two picks. We had, you had to expect that a little bit, that Casey Paul Hall was going to make some mistakes. But, but in all reality, he's gotten this TCU offense moving. They just have to capitalize on, on the momentum they've had, put some, finish some drives. Paul Hall. Far side, first down, and he finds Brown. Missed him last time, went right back, and Brown makes the catch at the 46-yard line. And that was a great job of recognizing where to go with the ball. Casey Paul saw the blitz coming, 
realized where the defense had vacated. You saw Adrian Phillips coming right off the edge. He said, I'm going right into it. You go right into where the blitz is coming from because there are fewer players on that side, and Brown ran a great route. Nice throw and catch by TCU. They put Cavill on in motion. Now he sets up alongside Paul Hall. He's got flags in motion. Paul Sparks on the offense with a 55. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's Joey Hunt. He just joined us, by the way. Offensive line woes, a big storyline for TCU. He jumped from center to right guard, and Eric Tausch tonight is at center. This front line, Joey's been banged up. Gary Patterson trying to do some patchwork. Paul Hall goes back to work, throws and through the hands of Brandon Carter. Well, it looked like Brandon Carter just felt the pressure coming a little bit. Just shortened up his arms instead of finishing the catch. He felt Carrington bind him on his back here. You got to make that catch. You got to make that catch on the sideline. I know someone's driving down on you, but those are the type of plays that you need to make if you're going to get out of a second and 15 type of a hole. Aaron Green joins the TCU backfield. And that time, just a misread on that little bubble screen, and the fall's incomplete. It was Green, the intended receiver. And it looked like Green either got caught up with the rush there or wasn't quite sure where he was supposed to go. As Casey Pauhall was throwing the ball, Green was still wrapped up within one of the defensive linemen. Javon Boykin, who started this game at quarterback, jumps on the field now as a wide receiver. He's in the slot to the near side, number two. Backs are split, Paul Hall shotgun. Sets and throws. Brandon Carter coming across the seam. Again, a catchable ball dropped just inside the 40-yard line. Well, not just a catchable ball, but a ball thrown, a strike. As Casey Pajal stood in and took a shot in the pocket. Watch him stay in there. You can't, the, the guy's got a broken left arm for crying out loud. He's playing with a soft cast on. He stood in and took a shot and delivered a ball that should have been a first down. Ethan Perry at his 35-yard line. End of the end kick. Jay Johnson, watch out. Flags out. He's up to 40, wide open. He's going to just trot in 30, 20, 10, 5, but hold on. Flag is back, 15-yard line. We'll get the call from Scott Novak. During the return, block in the back, receiving team number nine, half the distance of the goal. First down, timeout. So they bring back the 85-yard return. They set up a wall, but it was a block in the back. Texas will have it up 27-7. Fox Sports Supports is proud to partner with John Hopkins Medicine. John Hopkins is at the forefront of groundbreaking research into autoimmune disorders like multiple sclerosis and lupus. Join us in the fight against autoimmune, autoimmune disease. Donate by visiting hopkinsmedicine.org slash fox. 302 yards of offense for Texas. 180 for TCU. They ran, I mean, it's been even even game with plays. Texas with the football, six yard line. McCoy, he's been hot of late and again lays that ball right over the top. He caught a bunch of air. One official thought it was in. Now they discuss and the other line judge runs up. He waved it incomplete and they're having a conference at the 41. Whether it's complete or not, it, it could not have been a more perfectly thrown ball by Case McCoy. Kevin White does a really nice job. 
Kevin White, the corner, did a really nice job of forcing the wide out to the sideline and really decreasing the amount of room he had to work with. But Case just dropped that ball in the bucket over his receiver's outside shoulder. Fantastic throw and catch. McCoy up top. This time, maybe one time too many as Verrett was able to keep up, made the interception off the hand of McCoy back at the 13-yard line. And Jason Verrett, the All-American, coming up with a big interception at a very key time for this TCU defense. For over a hundred years, our alumni have been earning awards like the Nobel Prize, the Pulitzer, Olympic medals, and the Heisman Trophy. But there's no sense limiting yourself just yet. The University of Texas. What starts here changes the world. The new season of The Ultimate Fighter is powerful, relentless, epic, and it's just getting started. Catch the show. Critics say delivers the goods and see why they call Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate the new best rivalry in sports. It's a marathon of The Ultimate Fighter starting Tuesday at 7 Eastern, then catch an all-new episode Wednesday at 10. It's only here on Fox Sports 1. TCU with Wayman James starts the drive and a pickup of five to the 19. Well, TCU needs to get something going. They need to patch together a drive. They've moved the ball fairly well, but have had inopportune drops and penalties. Haven't been able to finish drives and get points out of them. James and Catalan in the backfield with Paul Hall. Wayne James, the ball carrier to the 20. Clock runs up on six minutes left, third quarter. Well, this is a huge thir third down for TCU. They need to convert a first down, keep the ball, and get some sort of point, something positive out of this drive. Down 20 with six minutes left in the third quarter. You're running out of time if you're going to make a big comeback. Texas shows blitz on the corner. They bring. Paul Hall reads it. Nice throw on a string out to the 30-yard line to Duxon. And Paul Hall, if you think he can find some rhythm, maybe this TCU offense can move the football. Well, and this is the flashes that he's shown up to this point. Casey Paul Hall can throw the football. There is there's no denying that. It's just a matter of him finding a rhythm. He's been gone for a long time, and he needs reps. Paul Hall back to work. Finds Boykin. Stop and go. He's wrestled down at the 37-yard line. How about that? The old quarterback working with Paul Hall. Start of the season as a wide receiver. There's a flag back at the 25. And these are the things that have plagued TCU yes. all night. Drops on the last drive. Penalties here. It seems like every time Casey Paul starts to get into a little bit of a rhythm, TCU shoots themselves in the foot. And, and these type of holes, first and 20, is it, tough for anybody to, to overcome, let alone somebody who's playing their first game in over a month. And back to deep in your own territory at the 19-yard line. Six flags for 65 yards tonight thrown against TCU. Paul Hall stands in the pocket, just got it away under heavy pressure. Malcolm Brown, number 90. Well, Malcolm Brown just pushes his way through the interior of the TCU defense. We've we've talked about their struggles, and Malcolm Brown is is a heck of an interior lineman. Against Iowa State a couple weeks ago, 10 tackles, a sack, a tackle for loss, and a pass breakup in the same game. Two sacks on the year, 31 tackles as the night started. Second down, 20. They ride Catalan to the outside, and again, Texas so quick in pursuit. Maybe two yards of the 22. Shiro Davis with the tackle. 
And Craig, here's why one play is so important over the course of a ball game. Casey Paul Hall throws a strike to Trevon Boykin, converts the first down, and they have the ball out past the 40-yard line. Instead, it's a holding call, and now you go back and you're looking at third and 17 from your own 22. The odds of converting this and, and, and maintaining possession of the ball are very slim when you should have had the ball out near midfield. Two wide receivers stacked high and low. Paul Hall, low snap, pressured, throws the ball. Up top, double coverage, and the falls incomplete. The intended receiver for TCU, Ladarius Brown. And Paul Hall shows the strength of that arm as he let it fly down inside the 35. Well, there's, there's no denying that Casey Paul Hall has the arm. He showed it last year in the few games he played to start the season. Throwing 10 touchdowns against only one interception. He showed it in 2011 when he threw for nearly 3,000 yards. It's just going to be a matter of time and getting those reps back before he settles into the form that he once had. Ethan Perry getting a workout tonight. Gives it a boot at the 10-yard line. This one's going to be short. And it's out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. Not a good kick. Texas at the 44-yard line. Fox Sports 1 starts off your Sunday mornings with Fox NFL kickoff. As the guys get you up to speed in all that's happening around the NFL, then turn over to Fox to catch America's number one pregame show. Fox NFL Sunday. Aaron Andrews sits down this week with Washington coach Mike Shanahan. You get more football later today on the East Coast, beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1 and Fox. Really, TCU's defense right now has just got to make a stop somehow, some way, make a big play. Bouncing outside, Jonathan Gray. Forget it. They had him trapped back at the line of scrimmage. And instead of a loss of one, he picks up a first down. Paul Dawson missed the block, and that let him hit the edge. Well, that, that's the type of play that has allowed Jonathan Gray to separate himself from this stable of backs. He is an explosive player. First down, 32-yard line of TCU, under four minutes left, third quarter. Knocked down. Gray, John Lewis, broke through the Texas front for the tackle. Texas, second and 11. Straight ahead. Ryan Neese, we played about 18 minutes of football since the three-hour weather delay. A little sluggish at times. It's a little sluggish at times, Craig. You're absolutely right. And, Joe, you, you know, we've watched this TCU defense a lot this week. We have a lot of respect for the way these guys play, but right now they look a little mentally fatigued. They look a little physically fatigued right now. They're going to have to try to find a way to come together if they want to stop this Texas offense because they're struggling right now. They're on their heels. They're giving up big plays, not only in the pass game, but the run game. They're kind of getting pushed around here uh, into this third quarter. Four wide receivers set on third down and long. McCoy's had success with the pass tonight. Launches it up top, picked off. Picked off at the nine, Kevin White. That's the kind of play defensively TCU had to have. They picked off McCoy now since the weather delay by Verrett, this time by White. Well, that's the type of play that Case McCoy has not made throughout the course of his career. He's the He's the game manager. He's the one who makes smart decisions. That was not, not, I think he would say that's not a smart throw off of his back foot deep in TCU territory, throwing into double coverage there. Granted, you have a 20-point lead, but still, that is not the, not the ideal ball to be thrown right there. Maybe that's the emotional spark that TCU needs. Late third quarter, down by a count of 20. Paul Hall goes back to work, stands in the pocket, throws near side on the hands of Dotson. 
stops the clock as he's bumped out of bounds at the 41. Boy, and I, I'm just, I continue to be impressed by Casey Paul on arm strength. I mean, he threw that ball on a laser across the field, right to the perfect spot of his wide receiver's outside shoulder. The placement was great. The, the velocity was great. The decision was great by Casey Paul. First down, 41-yard line. Pressure, Paul Hall throws. Tried to get rid of it in a hurry over the middle. Nearly had it picked off, and he wanted number 14, David Porter. And you're seeing TCU's, excuse me, Texas's defensive game play. It seems like every time they every time they give up a play, they bring pressure to the next one. Here you see it coming up the coming up the middle. Cedric Reed gets in there, jumps up, and tries to bat it down. But TCU needs to recognize that. The receivers need to recognize when pressure comes, adjust their routes accordingly. You saw Casey Paul getting on his receiver about five hours ago prior to the delay. Two sacks, five hurries on Paul Hall. Quick throw, near side, and the catch by Brown. Forward progress to the 47. And that may not seem like a important pass, but that takes you from third and long to third and four. And we mentioned it earlier, when they were third and 17, it's nearly impossible. Third and four and your playbook opens up. You have the option to run it, throw it, and you really keep a defense guessing. Paul Hall pressure. Puts it over the middle. He had to get rid of the ball and try to dump it safely, and it's incomplete. Cedric Reed put the heat on Paul Hall. Well, the pressure forced Paul Hall to throw this before he wanted to. Aaron Green is running right up the middle. He has ice. He's isolated on the middle linebacker Santos because Texas is in a cover two, which means two high safeties are each playing a half of the field. The middle linebacker is going to be isolated on the running back. Casey Paul Hall was simply forced to throw that sooner than he wanted and just kind of guess a spot and put it up over the top. I think you know the game plan because you're, you mentioned it again about the pressure after completion. They bring the heat and they brought the blitzer again. Diggs with a fair catch, 11-yard line. So McCoy goes back to work as Texas is working on their fourth consecutive win. Big story since the weather delay at front line of Texas. Well, they've been coming from all angles. They started the game, Jackson Jeffcoat with a big sack fumble. Cedric Reed has been involved, Malcolm Brown a few plays ago, all getting pressure on Casey Paul Hall. Most of that pressure, too, coming off the left side of Paul Hall. That's where he's wearing that soft cast on his left forearm. He fractured in week two. Paul Hall keeps picking himself up and coming back for more. Little misdirection by Texas. It's gray as he's knocked down at the 17-yard line. Good pursuit by Barrett. And we saw that fake reverse from Dajay Johnson that we saw earlier, way earlier in the first quarter. That reverse action keeps the TCU contained defenders at home and allows the offensive line to open up bigger holes for the running back. Final minute of the third, under center McCoy. Right side goes Texas, and the ball carrier, Jonathan Gray. Paul Dawson has been around the ball all night, the middle linebacker with another tackle. And Texas will not run another play here in the third. They'll let the clock run out. Texas will go to the fourth quarter, up 27 to seven on the road against TCU. It's been a night of rain and thunder, and it's been all Texas. They're up 20 on Fox Sports 1. As we move up on midnight central time, how about a game summary brought to you by Ford Service. Yes, a three hour, six minute weather delay, 14 points scored off two takeaways by Texas and Paul Hall, the big story as well for TCU. 
Seen his first action, Joey, since week two. And at times he's looked really sharp. And at times he's looked like he's been out since week two. I mean, I, I think you can see he's a talented player, but he simply needs to get back into football shape. Longhorn shot this drive. Or strike this quarter at the 20. And Gray with the ball carry just past the 20 to the 21 yard line. What a backfield of Gray, Brown, Bergeron. That Brown's got his choice. Bergeron not getting the carries, Joey as he has in the past because of some fumble problems. Well, yeah, he's fumbled each of the last two games for Texas. And how many times do you see the running back who scored 16 yeah. touchdowns last year end up third by, on the depth chart? Anthony Farah will punt inside his own 10. Fair catch. Balls out. Again, it comes out and Texas is all over it. The special teams of the Longhorns smother that football, and they've got it at the 31-yard line. There is a pile of white and purple. Boyer's there. Who's coming up last? Well, Craig, you got to give the credit for this to, to Farah. I mean, he, he hit thing, that thing a mile in the air. And when you punt the ball so high, it allows your coverage team to get down under it. And simply what happened is... Leroy Scott comes up out of the pile, number 31. The, the coverage team for Texas just pushed TCU's players into the return man's way. Watch this. He calls the fair catch. And that ball hung up in the air for so long that there were probably four or five, six TCU defenders that were in the area, and he simply just got blocked right into his, his return man. Looked like, looked like that ball faded a little bit to his right as well. It's like a pitcher throwing a nice this little splitter that just dives at the oh, end, right? It, it did. Texas up 27-7. Great field position to start this drive. On the edge comes Johnson, and he races down the sideline. Out of bounds, he goes at the 23. The Jay Johnson, he's got hands, he's got legs, he's got great speed, and he's only a sophomore. Miscues tonight. Three turnovers for TCU. They had four a week ago. Gray stacked up at the 22. Close to a first down. Well, Craig, those turnovers, one came on TCU's own three-yard line. One play later, Malcolm Brown punched it in. The next came on a, a Casey Paul Hall interception, where if he would have thrown the ball a little bit higher, given his player a chance to run under it, it would have been a walk-in touchdown. And not only did it not result in the touchdown for TCU, but Texas took the ball and marched down and scored a touchdown there. Longhorns awarded the first down. Off the right side, Malcolm Brown will pick up a yard to the 21. Good hit by Dawson, the middle linebacker. Dawson's been on the field, and he has been physical. Yeah, we've heard Dawson's name all night. And Coach, Coach Gary Patterson told us Dawson has done a great job of playing against teams that are very physical on the inside. He's going to be interested to see how Dawson played against Texas, who likes to spread people out a little bit. And he's, he's to this point, he's answered the call. He's done a very nice job. Now. He's been hot last two games, a total of 24 tackles. And again, that middle is stuffed up. Malcolm Brown trying to follow his tight end, Jeff Swain. Let's get a report. Here's Ryan. Joey and Craig, I got a question for you guys. I know Texas has their deeper running back, obviously, with Gray and Brown, but you would think that they would let Bergeron come back in, start getting some reps, get accustomed to holding on to the ball. You got to get game reps. You got to practice it. And this is a great opportunity for them to do that. You know they're going to try to run out the clock with the run game. That's a good question. Sometimes you wonder how long a coach lets a player sit and think about it. Well, <laughs> they have the luxury of three guys who can all carry it. Low snap handled by McCoy. Off his back foot, throws it in the corner. 
And that ball is incomplete. Kendall Sanders was one on one with Kevin White. And again, great coverage by Kevin White. Kevin White is, has seen the majority of passes this season come his direction because people avoid the All-American on the other side, Jason Verrett. And, and I got to be honest, I've been very impressed with the play of Kevin White up to this point in the season. He's done a very nice job of handling the volume of balls coming up. Anthony Farah will try a 36-yard field goal attempt. Boots it long enough, and it is good from 36. Texas now leads 30 to 7 on the road in Fort Worth. I'm Jackson Jeffco, defensive end from Texas. When you pop someone with a big hit, it's an adrenaline rush, especially for me if I hit a quarterback. I watch a lot of film on my dad. Whenever I can get film from him, I watch him. He's my biggest role model. I love to go fishing. When my siblings come with me, and I have a twin sister. Well, definitely Bebo is the best. That's our guy. What a family tree. His dad, as he mentioned, his role model, Jim Jeffcoat, made his name defensive front for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the Jeffcoat name is synonymous around Texas. Well, yeah, it is. And it's becoming very well known in the TCU backfield as well. He's <laughs> yes. added to this Big 12 leading total of six sacks. Now is seven after getting one tonight. Has two and a half tackles for a loss. Adding to his team lead. Now is ten and a half. He's been all over the field tonight. Catalan brings it out of the end zone. Two yards deep. It'll wiggle move. Flag flies. Another one is out. Back inside the 20-yard line. Block in the back, receiving team number 16. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, Craig, if you're TCU right now, this is a great chance to get Casey Paul Hall some live reps. I mean, you're, you're probably going to be throwing the ball a lot right now, and it's a chance to just go out and make good decisions if you're Casey. Don't try and get it all back at once. Just get some experience. Make the throws that you're going to need to continue to make throughout the season and get back the experience that you've missed over the last four weeks. Texas closing in, Joey, on a 400-yard game. Offensively, there's that quick toss. Devon Boykin with the reception. So Paul Hall took over for Boykin after the second series. And now Boykin's back at receiver. And they team up for a gain of five. Call it six, second down and four. Jordan Moore will join Green in the backfield. Paul Hall on a quick two-step drop, throws near side on the hands of Ladarius Brown, and a first down for TCU. Great read, great recognition, great delivery by Casey. You know, talking to Gary Patterson yesterday, you know, he, he's mentioned to us, look, I don't know how many reps Paul Hall will get, He's been on the scout squad team the last three weeks. I've been impressed that he's been able to go this distance. Absolutely. I mean, you have to figure he missed all of spring. Didn't do anything football related until the start of camp and has been out since week two. Once a deep ball over the top and just through the hands off the fingertips of Ladarius Brown. Indeed has the big arm. Well, yeah, and that ball was just inches away from being perfect. Carrington Bindham had very nice coverage. Right little, on the back shoulder, about, literally on the back about shoulder. Pull on 85's yeah. uh, numbers there. In case he put that ball just about six inches too far. But there weren't too many other places that he could miss. Second down and 10. Play clock run under, runs under five. Paul Hall back to work, short pass, and it's through the hands, incomplete. We've seen that many times tonight. Jawan Story, the intended receiver, he's a transfer sophomore out of Florida. Joe, you have to be frustrated 
I call you the old gunslinger for a reason, but there are just nights receivers just aren't tuned in with you. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was trying to count, just quick count in my head. I, I can think of at least four drop balls already. I'm sure we could find a couple more. But those are the plays that take from just under 50% completions to over and convert first down to keep you on the field. Third down and 10. That ball's incomplete. Boykin, the intended receiver, and Gary Patterson looks on. You can. Hey, Craig, that, that, that was, face tells you a lot. Well, that, that was simply not enough reps by the receiver, who's Trevon Boykin, but playing quarterback. Exactly oh. what I was about to say yep. is the receiver needs to cross the face of the defender. The whole middle of the field was open, and when you run that seam route, you have the opportunity to keep it straight up the field if you have man coverage and a single safety in the middle, or if the middle's open, cross his face and get in there. Well, high snap. Texas brings some pressure, and the kick is away. Ball comes out. And it looks like it is covered up by Texas at the 29-yard line. We'll take a break. Just over 10 minutes left. <laughs> 30 to 7, Texas. Well, it was a month ago. You thought Texas, you just ride them off for this season, but they have bounced back in a big way at the right time, undefeated in Big 12 play, as is Baylor, eighth ranked in the country. Well, yeah, that's the. Uh... That's the key one right there is 3-0 in conference. You don't need to see the, the two losses non-conference. Texas has games in November against Oklahoma State and Texas Tech, which could set them up for a big showdown against Baylor at the end. Gray runs the ball to the 30-yard line. Here's what's left. Kansas, Charlie Wise having troubles with the Jayhawks. West Virginia lost against Kansas State today. Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, Baylor, all top 20 teams. Well, it sets up for a run. I mean, it really does. They've already beat Oklahoma. They're a game up in the loss column. Texas Tech and Oklahoma State have already both lost a football game. And Baylor is the only undefeated team left in conference right now. Second down and nine. McCoy, quick hitter. It's Gray, breaks a tackle and another. He's into TCU territory at the 46-yard line. We talked about it earlier, Craig. You run those plays in the first and second quarter that just get two yards or get three yards, and you say, why do you keep running them? Well, because eventually the defense is going to wear down and they're going to give up chunks like that. You're setting up those runs in the fourth quarter, and Texas' offensive line has done a great job. By the way, Gray is flirting with 100 yards. He's got 21 carries, 94 on the ground. Joy, I have to ask, and I'm sure a lot of Texas fans who are still staying up late with us are sitting back just kind of in wonderment as well how this team turned it around after giving up those gaudy numbers to Taysom Hill and BYU. 550 rush yards, a 40 to 21 loss. They bring a new defensive coordinator, Greg Robinson. They lose to Ole Miss after he had three days to prepare, and all of a sudden, I mean, Texas is eight minutes away from winning their fourth straight game. Yeah, it speaks to the resolve of this Texas team. Nice cut. Another nice cut back by Gray. Flag is out. Near the first down marker is Gray. Holding, holding, offense. Number 77. Gray. Bring it back. Penalty. Second down. Kennedy Estelle, 77, the right tackle. Well, quite going back, there, there's never been any dispute that Texas has the talent to win football games. Jackson Shipley, Mike Davis, Jonathan Gray, Malcolm Brown, David Ash coming into the season. Joe Bergeron. Joe Bergeron. I mean, this, this Texas football team on both sides of the ball, ball, Quandre Diggs, Carrington Bindup, Jackson Jeffcoat, they've got all sorts of talent all over the place. It's been a matter of finding a system in which they feel comfortable to just cut loose and play, and I think that's what Greg Robinson has done. He's simplified things so they can just use their talent. Don't think, just react and play. Malcolm Brown joins McCoy in the Texas backfield. And up the middle he goes for a couple. I think it's an interesting point because Greg Robinson, when we talked to him, Joey, was pretty simple himself. He had a little time to evaluate. 
you realize the athleticism of this defense, and as you mentioned, the simplification. When you have good athletes, four and five star recruits, don't you just let them play? Well, yeah, you, you, you have to give them a little bit of structure in which to work and then say, just cut it loose and don't think. I mean, that's the, you can get extremely creative and drop the most complicated defense in the world to try and confuse an offense, but a lot of times you just end up confusing yourself. Third down and 17 for Texas. They'll run it up the middle to midfield. And the Longhorns will be forced to punt with seven, just over seven minutes remaining. And up by a count of 30 to seven. Mac Brown took a lot of hit, heat. He's taken a lot before. And he told us a couple of times over the phone, you know, he stays positive. He has a certain core of individuals, Joey, that he trusts. And that's who he listens to. Well, in 16 years, you're going to handle a little bit of adversity. It's, it's inevitable. And Mac Brown has, done it, has always done it with class. Punt is up. And a fair catch back at the 15-yard line. Timeout in Fort Worth. Down the stretch we go. Texas reeling in a win. Up 30 to 7 against TCU. Now that TCU sideline. For the emotions drained tonight by Texas. Joey, I really thought TCU maybe after the rain delay would come out a little kick in their step with this home field advantage. A lot of fans stayed around, but Texas came out renewed. Played well. They did. I think it speaks to the experience of this Texas team. You know, a lot of these guys, Espinoza, Walters, Hopkins up front, Case McCoy, Malcolm Brown, Shipley, all the Quandre Diggs, Bindham, they were all playing as freshmen and sophomores. And now they have 30, 40 games of experience under the belt, and they're the ones who came out and just handled the adversity. The ball may have been deflected off the hand of Paul Hall. It falls incomplete. Oh, yes, Texas fans, well represented tonight. The eyes of Texas are upon them. Yes, they are. As you look ahead, Joey, you mentioned the schedule gets tough in the final three weeks for the Longhorns. Next week, Kansas, who's had their own struggles. And TCU will battle West Virginia. Paul Hall out of the pocket, slides at the 19. Well, you never like, you never like to think of a game as a gimme. But in the Big 12 right now, Kansas and West Virginia are the two teams that are really struggling. And those are the next two teams up for Texas. I mean, this really gives them a chance coming off of a bye that last week, beating a, a good TCU defense tonight. They can really sharpen things up over the next two weeks and get ready for that stretch run and make a push at the Big, Tw at the Big 12 championship. And who would have thought that after week three that we'd be talking about the Texas team challenging for a Big 12 championship? This will be the 10th punt of the night for Perry. Well, he's had some trouble, struggles keeping the ball in bounds tonight. It takes a ricochet out of bounds back around the 45. That's where Texas will take over with a comfortable 23-point lead. It has been a long night, but Texas fans having a good time here in Fort Worth, up 30 to 27. Time for our Right Stuff Player of the Game, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors, and that defense of Texas was impressive, led by Jackson, Jackson Jeffcoat. He was all over the place, and even when he wasn't making the plays, he was allowing his teammates to make plays by simply drawing attention. New quarterback, he wears number 18, Tyrone Swoops. And there's a ball carrier, Bergeron. So, Ryan, you asked to see Bergeron, you got him in the final five minutes of this game. 
Well, I think it's important for him to get in. You know, it gives him an opportunity to gain his confidence. Obviously, he had some issues in, in games previously fumbling the ball, but now he has an opportunity to go against a live defense, secure the football, and find a way to close out this game for his offense. Brian, you make a great point. I mean, the guy had 16 touchdowns on the ground last year. He obviously has a whole lot of talent and needs, they're going to need him as you get on the stretch run for Texas. Timeout, Texas. Texas, second charge of the second half, 30 second timeout. It's a 30 second timeout, we'll keep it here. And McCoy, all smiles. And let's send it back to Los Angeles, a game break. It's late, here's Patrick O'Neill. Yeah, indeed it is. Oregon State has had no answer for Stanford's Tyler Gaffney. So right back to the well, 32 yards, untouched. Gaffney, a buck 32 and three touchdowns, 20 to nine in the fourth quarter. As we go back to Craig, Joey, Ryan, your whole crew, I know it's been a long night. Great job by you guys in Texas. Patrick, thanks so much. Now, I didn't expect the weather to move in as harshly as it did. That was nice of Patrick to say. Sloop's a true freshman, quarterback, six foot four. He's gonna roll out and throw on play action. He's gonna tuck and run. Long strides and he dances out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Now that's a smart play for an 18-year-old. Not throwing the ball and risking an interception was a smart play. He used his legs to get the first down. The favorite thing about Texas, he says it's about tradition. That's why he's a Longhorn. Well, there's a lot of tradition in Texas. Of course, that national championship of 05 rings a bell. A couple Heisman trophies in there. Bergeron gets the carry left side, past the 35 to the 33-yard line. Clock continues to run, under three and a half minutes to play. Well, Brown's been around a long time, so has Patterson. I'm sure they're gonna label this game as one of the more, uh, how about strange, of their career. I think that's a fair assessment. Texas closing in on a 200-yard game tonight on the ground. It was good last week, as I mentioned earlier, 255 in a win against Oklahoma. Bergeron again, the ball carrier. And now flags out. After the play was over, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on a defense number two. 15-yard penalty, first down. Jason Barrett. Well, the frustration is understandable. But you can't let it overflow and cost your team 15 yards. I mean, it, it, it's been a tough game for everybody out there. It's been physical up front. You add in there a, a three-hour rain delay or lightning delay. Loops on play action. Stiff's arms, and he is bumped out of bounds. They'll lose a couple, maybe three, back to the 23. That stops the clock at 221. Mac Brown letting this clock run. Second down at the 23. Hand out Bergeron. The big hole, it closed down at the 15. When you saw a little bit of the talent right there of Joe Bergeron, a big back, six foot one, 230 pounds. 
I love his story. He was a fullback in high school and came into the Texas camp for high school kids as, as an unknown and just happened to run a 4-4 and they <laughs> kind of quietly said, hey, I don't think anybody really knows about you. How many people paying attention to fullbacks and they offered him a scholarship and he came and has contributed in a big way for this long time. Junior out of Mesquite, Texas. He slips and slides inside the 15-yard line. You know, Mac Brown came to Texas, Joey, from North Carolina after the 1997 season, the 28th head coach in Texas history. He's second in school victories just behind Daryl Royal, two-time Big 12 Coach of the Year, national championship in 05, runner-up in 09. Nine straight, 10-plus win seasons. The only coach in BS, BCS history to do so. Well, no matter what the talk was about Mac Brown and this Texas team, there, there's no denying what he has done for this program and how he has done it. Just a classy coach and a wonderful man. Soups tries to run out of trouble, and he's down back at the 21-yard line. So the final seconds tick down in what turned out to be a six-hour ball game. <laughs> Over three hours of lightning and weather delays. They plays football here. And TCU will fall to three and five, one and four in Big 12 play. And Texas, I tell you, Joey, their role continues. This is looking like it's a team that's shaping up to be in the mix for the Big 12 championship and that automatic BCS berth. And who would have said that after week three when Texas is sitting there one and two? Fired their D coordinator, gave up 550 yards on the ground to BYU. This is a good Texas football team right now. Longhorns with four straight wins. Kansas State, Iowa State, Oklahoma, and tonight on the road against TCU. Two coaches shake hands in midfield, and the final seconds are done. And for Joey Harrington, Ryan Neese, this is Craig Bowerjack. We say good night from Fort Worth, where once again, Texas with a 30 to 7 win. Coming up for those of you watching on Fox Sports 2, it's MotoGP World Championship, the Japanese Grand Prix. You've been watching Fox College Football, presented by Geico.